There it is. Awesome. Cool. Uh, well, thanks so much for sitting down with us today and taking a little time to chat about you, your work, your life, your life in music. Um, really, the cats. Cool. Yeah, yeah, the cats. As, as, yeah, my dog. Yeah, everything is just—it's all happening. Um, so, I was saying before we, we we press play here, I was just saying to to you that probably our audience, the people who will listen in on this chat, probably know works of yours that are like in the bigger genres, right? Right. Like, um, like the concertos and Cold mm -hmm. Mountain and the sort of the bigger works that are these sort of larger scale. They make um, a lot of noise, those works. Make a lot of noise, a lot of, <laughs> lot of players, you know. Um, so my, I'm very curious as to what it's like when you're distilling that big sort of style, that what's the process like when you're working in a, in a smaller genre like chamber music or like art song? Yeah, you know what, for me, it always, especially writing art song, I always feel like it's a breath of fresh air. That's for oh, yeah. me because there's not immense forces and I can kind of let the light in to the music in a different way. So I remember at one point when I finished Cold Mountain, literally the next week, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to have to move on to the next piece, but I feel like I have a lot of vocal music in me. So I <laughs> writing songs afterward, not related to the opera. But there's just something about it that's, I feel like it's like a cat stretching and yeah. breathing. You know, I think there's just something about that that's like absolutely, it's magical. Maybe because it's such small forces or something. I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah.
I feel like you can really live with the text in a different way in an art song. Um, almost like much, it's much closer to the poetry and the poetic form than um, you know when the libretto gets transformed into opera, which is such broad strokes. It's yeah, that's actually true. And thought of from the poet's viewpoint, that actually I, it is a more it's much more intimate. You're not depending on like greater forces which everyone has a different interpretation of a poem if you have a, a course of 160 doing it. It's the one individual they're going to bring their experience, and I think that's how poets think also. Yeah, yeah. There, I think of it sometimes in terms of layers of interpretation. There's just less in the way. Um, so maybe that's like kind of connected to the light coming in a little bit. Um, you can, it feels different, though. I'll be honest, it actually feels different when I'm writing songs. I've just come off of writing a concerto and I'm about to start a song cycle on. and I had an option to oh, do yeah. song cycle or two or three other pieces that I can juggle in my schedule but I thought oh you know I need to breathe a little bit spring is coming I'm gonna write <laughs> songs <laughs> you've got a stretch in there somewhere that's it <laughs> so how does that work how do you, do you go and search out the poetry or is that a collaborative process what does it how does it begin yeah you know every single instance is different the song that's being done on this series actually is one of i think six or seven that i wrote as valentine gifts to my now wife oh so, yeah that it, i mean it's a really unusual thing to give someone but i would write a song every year and give it for valentine's day so that then i also wrote the text on this one which I'm oh, not nice. a poet, I'm not a skilled writer or anything, but occasionally I'll I'll write a song just for the fun of it and I will sit there and come up with the words and the music at the same time. Normally I'm working with some commissioning group and they, they ask for something specifically or yeah. a singer will ask me to look at certain poems. So it's it's collaborative and sometimes it's just me doing it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That's actually a really nice backstory to yeah poem. yeah you can hear it i mean it's you know the text is very personal it's um who was it wasn't it did Mahler write mama Mahler some songs i think i think he did. yeah yeah i think so i get the feeling that there are a lot of composers have actually done this to significant yeah. others and maybe people don't know about it because they are kind of quiet sort of experiences and i realize that's a unique thing to write a song for your sweetie that's right <laughs> yeah that's a particular kind of gift that you can give i think it's very and it kind of it's it's so attached to that notion of the personal with art song it can be so personal i think so too and you know i think about it show and i've now been together 40 years wow, <laughs> so that's that's awesome. like, i would given a lot of other gifts i i was like there's maybe there's something else that's different you know when it's <laughs> about that I'm like yeah that's probably what i was thinking when i started these songs so yeah ah uh, well it's a it's a nice kind of gift that keeps on giving yeah well, that's you know? true <laughs> true so that answers my next question which is tell us you know a little bit about how this song was conceived um but and you've touched a little bit on other vocal music of yours but i'd love to hear a little bit more about your upcoming song cycle yeah, this is um, a Tucson song festival, and I I believe Sasha Cook is going to be the one who is singing. The COVID, the entire pandemic thing slowed everything down, like really slowed everything down, the communication, trying to talk to people. So we're still working on the theme for a poem. I think that's basically, I've been, I'm going through poetry currently and thinking oh, it would be nice to kind of slow down and breathe after handling yeah. a concerto, which is a lot of forces and this is a, a way to kind of relax into the music. It's it's amazing how different it is. I have to admit, I for me, it was a real shock at how different writing an opera was from everything else I was working on. Oh yeah. And I've written a ton of chamber music, like just instrumental chamber music, mm -hmm. but that's actually the thing I have the most of in my catalog. Yeah, yeah. And, but song has always been a little out of, I guess maybe it's taken me a while to get used to the voice. That, strangely as that sounds, yeah. like, as I was an instrumentalist, I always get commissions for instrumental pieces. Sure. And uh, But I did have, it was so thrilling, I got a chance to stay with Ned Roram at Curtis. We'd, we'd all get together and set texts and compare them and he would talk about them and then he would meet with us and yeah. I'm like, what a master of song, really. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really like the American Schubert or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. And just basically phenomenal. as prolific. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe even more so, you know, it's yeah, truly. impressive, yeah. That's the real, yeah, that's awesome. Um, that's something that I think, well, my anecdotal sort of feeling is that a lot of composers tell me that they're less familiar with the voice, and this is sort of a big 
kind of roadblock. It's my regret is not actually singing in a choir when I was younger or something. Oh, yeah, sure. You know what it was like to breathe like that and think about the words and such. Mm -hmm. I mean, that really feels like a hole in my education. Yeah, and it's something that I think maybe gets glossed, maybe less and less gets glossed over in composition uh, training. Right. Um, but it's not I there, actually. I don't think it's even there. Explicitly, yeah. Because you teach orchestration and all of that, right? But not right. necessarily writing for it's, the voice. Yeah. You know, it's a good point. Now that you're mentioning this, I think I need to press to actually get segments at Kurt <laughs> where we're doing art songs. I don't know why I didn't think of that. We worked on, you know, getting the chamber thing and the orchestra thing, mm -hmm. but it really, it should be. One of those be. genres, it's like, it should be. It absolutely should be because, okay, now here, here I'm going to go on my soapbox <laughs> because this is totally, <laughs> this is what I feel is, you know, it is the, the songwriting tradition is, it, it goes back, you know, through human history, through like uh, uh, any- Probably the cave, had, right? if you get right down to it, the earliest songs were someone yes. singing and hitting a rock together. I'm but sure it was of that. Of some sort, so. Right, it's, there's always been that, and we have folk music, and we have, the popular tradition has really carried that through folk music and the singer-songwriter tradition and all that, and I think it's still very vibrant and alive. Where, where you know classical music is being made, whatever that means these days. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, so does it come up with your students? Do you have students who are like totally, you know, anxious to write opera or anxious to yeah. dive into? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question because we have a set requirement where they have to write one chamber work a year and one orchestral work. And inevitably somebody does something with voice in the chamber. Hmm. It's yeah. harder to pull off, strangely, it's hard to pull off with the orchestra concert for the composers because it conflicts with opera rehearsals. So there the school's go. small <laughs> enough that really everyone's like all hands on deck for this or that. Sure. So, sure. But now that I, I'm thinking about it, it should, it seems to me, I mean, you know, Ned Worm, I studied with him at Curtis. I think about the tradition of Sam Barber going to school yeah. and teaching at Curtis. It's, they don't, the kids don't ask. I think. I don't know whether it's they're not hearing songs. I've always been aware of art songs, and a lot of this yeah. is probably from Ned's influence. Just it's a, kind of incredible all the worlds he created, and being aware of that, being at Curtis, kind of it's in my head, but it's not in the heads of the students. For some, I don't know yeah. why it's a good, but I think maybe it's time to make it so. <laughs> maybe it kind of connects to something I've been thinking about a lot lately as I sort of swim in waters of. of people who are starting their careers and right and um and so a lot of them are young right they're all sort of because the people who are you know who are finding ways to connect identity and autobiography i think that's a fairly new process uh in sort of my feeling about it is that it's a little bit of a new phenomenon in the at least in the world of classical music we've seen this in visual art and dance literature that people's autobiography tends to come creep into the work here and there and that's very much accepted and then classical music was just sort of behind on that i think i think this classical music still clings to the two century old music so yeah guys totally. like, like the classical has not advanced at the same pace as all the other arts or the other like rock and roll country rap and all that stuff is is moving yeah. along classical has a big history that it carries kind of pulling behind it as you move along right. <laughs> and like trying to make new music in the same in the yeah. same box is like yeah. so limiting and, and so you know that it can, i think it can all fit together this is the thing i mean i know one of the things of the pandemic i was noticing the boston symphony has a woodwind quintet of mine on they have like two orchestra pieces and two chamber pieces on there program for streaming and I'm like why can't we do that people like variety it doesn't have to yeah, be all totally. kind of music so mm -hmm. there are some people who are re-examining that right now I think who are thinking because of the pandemic and the complete stoppage of everything they're reconsidering well was it working do we need to adjust something yeah so hopefully we grow and move forward and figure out better ways to do things and, and to get it out there into the world
thing I think about young people when I do programs like even during COVID I've been doing things with like junior highs and they're like oh we can get a living composer online here and <laughs> the kids are like do you mean I can write it's so I realized that they feel a little more empowered if they have a voice yeah they only have a voice if it's something that's contemporary mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. going to be the same experience for them to them art song music is rock and roll or whatever they're listening to on yeah. the radio. That's how they think of it. So yeah. it's an interesting thing. Yeah, maybe we need to relax our feeling around what it is, right? Yeah. It's, it's poetry and music, right? Yeah. Like yeah. poetry, sex yeah. and music. You know? Although I, feel, I still feel like there's a place for, you know, the music conceived in, in an aesthetic like Ned Roram was teaching and, and writing in, you know, I still, yeah. really that music resonates me, with me so deeply. As a as a singer, so I know that's still alive. Like yeah. that's gonna. So it's it's interesting to think about. I, how maybe it. we just have to share it with the world in a different way. I mean, maybe we need to find a different way to get it out to people so they have access. Because I realize part of the limitation is presenters and chamber music. Yeah. Whether it's a presenter or if it's a group going around, I don't know. Do singers still go out and do art song recitals? Is that uh, used to be? Yeah, absolutely. It used to be a thing. And I feel like it's more the purview of like very famous opera singers now who people want to just hear an hour and a half of. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And so they're there more for the personality than they are the music itself. Um, mm -hmm. and maybe people don't know this, but when you know you go to a bar and you hear your favorite singer songwriter and they're doing a couple sets and they take a couple breaks and they're doing an art song recital for you. Yeah. So I feel, <laughs> I feel like it's there. It's kind of a beautiful balance because it's not overblown. Like if you have a full orchestra, it's a whole different feeling with a full orchestra. But there's something about the, it's like you're, you're right there with the performers. There's always a gap between the audience and the orchestra. But here in this sort of thing, it's as if you're having a conversation with someone. Totally. Yeah. And I think that's well within, you know, it's, it's original conception is, you know, literal chamber music. Yeah. Um, you know, how Schubert would write a song for his buddy and then play it for his other buddies that night. <laughs> what do you guys think? That's you totally know? cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I can't wait wow. for that to happen again. <laughs> I know. It's I'm, I'm yeah. desperate for that. Actually, I think about it. I'm, I'm like, wow. Desperate. Yeah. 
totally. Music um, in person, and, and yeah, it's been too long. Thank you.